today we're going to talk about what do I keep in my clarinet case. Okay, so um, in a previous episode we talked about things you can buy in an already put together clarinet kit. Okay, some of them have, you know, really great things or some of them had things that you probably don't need to get or things that you can get cheaper and that's what I'm going to show you today, what I have. Okay, so I keep a little bag in my uh, clarinet case. It's not too big and it's not too too wide so it fits very easily in the outside pocket of my clarinet so i don't have to put it in on top of my clarinet itself so it fits in the outside bag okay in this bag i don't fit my swab and i also have a nice um, swab um, has a good long string on it with the weighted end of course and i like the um the silk type swabs um, they go through the clarinet very um, easily and um, they, they absorb the water really well too. Um, the only thing I don't like about this swab is that it doesn't have um, the little um, extra end on it. Like when I showed you the, the Bakun swab, it has a little extra end on it. I think also there's some other companies that might make them with a little extra string on them. So in case it gets backed up, you can pull it out again. Although this swab is very long, as you can see, and so if I get it pulled halfway through, there's still quite a bit left, okay? That's why I don't like those kind of, this little square piece of chamois cloth. Those get stuck all the time. The string is not um, very strong and they break off in there a lot. So they're not, not very good. So if, if yours comes with a very small, about this big little cloth and it's kind of made out of either chamois or some kind of felt type material, um, you want to invest in a different kind of swab. Um, I have a couple here I could show you. This one is called Super Slick uh, Clarinet Flute Hanky Swab. Um, these are uh, actually nice swabs. They are made out of cloth, uh, cotton cloth. They're big, they have a nice long string, they have the weighted end on them too. These are not very expensive either. You can get these for around $7.99, I believe. And I usually shop on like Amazon or Woodwind Brasswind is another really good place to get things. Um, the other kind of swab that you can buy if you need to replace your swab, um, the silk swab. I like these a lot. These are the silk clarinet swab. It's just like this one, exactly like this one here. Uh, it doesn't have the extra end on it, but again, it's very long and it absorbs really well. This one is a little bit more money. I think these are around maybe $12, $13, $14. So they're about twice as much as one like this. Um, but I really strongly you know, suggest that if you have a clarinet kit that comes with one of those little small squares of felt-like chamois cloth, um, please get a new one. Um, that other one is going to get stuck in your horn and it does not absorb at all. So hanky cotton or the hanky silk. One of these two are both really good. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to my little case. All right. So I'm going to see what I've got in here. All right. So first thing I'm going to pull out is my cork grease. Okay, a little tube of cork crease. This one is um, by Bakun Musical Services. So I like that a lot. It's got a, uh, it's, I like the tube kind, any kind, it's tube kind, Yamaha has a tube kind, the Dario, um, all of those, they have the, the tube kind, which I really like the best. Okay, all right, um, let's see what else I've got in here. All right, um, next thing, okay, I have a couple of little screwdrivers. And um, these are just ones that I bought at like a dollar store, okay? And I have, um, I have one, two, they're two different sizes. One's a little bit bigger. This is probably the one I would use most of the time is the bigger, bigger uh, or the, excuse me, the smaller end on it. This is the bigger, the smaller. Um, I would use this. You can also buy like little sets of screwdrivers, but you don't need to have all those screwdrivers. So you just take the ones that are gonna work with your, with your clarinet. Now, you don't wanna take this and just like be tightening everything up. The only time you want to worry about using a little teeny screwdriver is if something's sticking out far and it's not supposed to be sticking out. So then you can screw it back in, but don't go experimenting and start, you know, screwing on, um, different things, especially don't start messing around with this, um, key right here where your A key is, because that's going to adjust the height of how the, the pads are going to cover and such. So you really probably are only going to use that in case like one of these bigger screws comes out right in here or maybe maybe up in in this area right here you might have a screw that comes out a little bit but 
that that's the only place is if you have a lot of issues going on then take it to a repair person please okay all right so screwdrivers all right next thing I have in my case is I have some little squishies these are um, pencil cushions okay the pencil cushions are really great I've talked about these in I'll show you a couple of different types that you can get I got these both at the Dollar Tree okay you can buy these for a dollar um, this is the squishy gel kind and this is the kind of sort of a I don't know it's like a it's a matte type I'm not sure exactly what the material is for this, but this is a this is a really good good one too. Sometimes the squishy ones sometimes will split easier than these are when you're pushing it on. But this actually either one of these they actually work on one of these bigger type of um, adjustable uh, thumb rests. So it'll work. It promise it, it may not look like it does, but it does because it stretches. So th this is something you can get for a dollar. It's so super cheap. Um, you can buy a thumb rest at a music store, but it's going to cost you about five times as much. It's going to be m much more expensive. You can get, um, you, you get 10 in a package, you cut them in half, you've got 20 of these where, uh, and you spent a dollar, whereas if you buy another one at a music store and spend three to five dollars and you got one, and if you lose it, then you're done. Okay, so anyway, you got a lot of these, so this is kind of a nice thing to have. Dollar Tree, Walmart, those are a couple places you can buy those. All right, now, let's see. Okay, so um, for um, when water gets in the keys as such, I have a couple different things. Uh, for many years, I used um, cigarette paper and I have this little thing. This has lasted me forever. So I have this little package of cigarette paper and this is the ungummed kind. So um, when, I, when I use it, it has, um, it's, it's good and it works really well and it doesn't, doesn't rip up and leave any kind of residue. It's great for that. But there's something else too that you can use that uh, I found that is um, little squares of shop paper towels. Okay, you can buy shop paper towels in a very large roll. Okay, so you've got tons of these that you can use. So like, let's say your, your pad, uh, let's see, this one up here gets, gets here, you get a lot. You put that in there, it's gonna soak that up and you take that out and it's smooth. So it doesn't have like a lot of paper towels have like ripples in them or puckers in them. This one doesn't have that. So it really absorbs. And then when you take it out, it doesn't leave a residue. So it's great for that. So I have um, several little squares of that cut up and I have that put into my case. And so that, that works really great. And I bought these at Walmart. They're called Scott Shop Original Towels. Now, make sure that when you buy these, um, if you find them, uh, you may wanna make sure you find the original multi-purpose because it's smooth. There's another kind that has the ripples in it and I would recommend getting the smooth kind. So this was like $2.99 and you can, you know, give it out to all your friends and it'll last forever because it's, there's so much of it. Okay. All right. Um, another thing I have, which is, uh, similar to what the Bakun, uh, cleaning kit had is a little mascara brush that I keep in there. Mascara brush is used for cleaning out those tone holes. Okay. And it's great because it doesn't leave any kind of, um, you know, fabric behind because it just doesn't it doesn't come off, and so it's nice for just kind of getting a little bit of cleaning going on in there. Um, it's better than using a Q-tip because Q-tips can leave a little bit of a um, you know the cotton behind too. So this is really good. I like to use that. Um, another thing I keep in my case is just like a little um, makeup brush, and so if I have any kind of dust in there. It's such a, it's a very, very soft because they use it for makeup. And so it's really soft. And so I can just go in here and I can dust off my keys and make sure that nothing gets in there. So I have this size too, which costs me a dollar. And then I have this size too, which is a little smaller. So if I need to get in a little bit better, I've got it. Okay. So all three of these things, um, I bought at the Dollar Tree. Okay, so a dollar for each one of these two. So again, you're saving a lot. Dollar Tree's got a lot of things that you can you can use um, for you know your clarinet kit, such. Okay, so let's see. All those things. 
Okay, and I always like to carry mouthpiece patches because I like to give them out to students when I when I go to places and I see they don't have one. These are really essential to, for protection of your mouthpiece and your teeth. And also when you're playing, we use a lot of top teeth pressure. And so when we're pushing up into our teeth, these are really good to help kind of keep our teeth where they're supposed to be and such. So um, I use mouthpiece patches. These are by um, Reserve, the Dario company. Reserve, and I think these are the best ones. I, I use these all the time and I give them out to all my students. So the, the Reserve mouthpiece patch, this is the, um, the 0.80 mm thickness. So they're not real super thick. I don't like the real thick ones and I don't like them real thin. Um, this is perfect, I think, and these are the black ones. And so I, I like these a lot. Okay, let's see, what else do I have that I haven't showed you yet? Um, okay, so this is something that I never see anybody have, but I can't, I can't even remember who told me about this, but um, I have a teeny crochet hook. Okay, why do I want to do that? Okay, so a lot of times uh, things will pop off, you know, especially down in the lower end of the clarinet. You have these little springs down here, okay? and the keys won't hold or they won't close if you don't have those springs in place. So if one of those little springs happens to pop out right there, this little teeny tiny crochet hook can grab that and pop it right back in again. And it just works great. Teeny crochet hook. Okay, this one's a little thin metal one, little crochet hook. Um, I bought this at Walmart for a couple dollars, I think like $2. Um, but it's been really, really great when I've had something because, you know, you could maybe get it with your finger or something else, or I've seen people take pencils and try to get it. But this is perfect because it has this teeny little hook on it. It grabs that thing, pops it right back in, and it's so great. So crochet hook is a, a really, really good tool. Okay, what else? All oh, right, um, so sometimes our corks come off, okay? And um, in a pinch, uh, I have used um, some of the cleaning paper, the cigarette paper, um, or those little cleaning papers like we looked at. You can fold it over and you can put that around uh, your, your cork on your mouthpiece because that's usually where it comes off is on the mouthpiece and such. So um, if you don't uh, have that, or here's something else you can use. This is um, Teflon pipe thread, okay? It's really, really strong really strong and it's thin and you can wrap that around and it works great okay this is just a small little roll that I got um, at Walmart again for for a couple dollars and the only thing that I was going to say about this is when you um, if you're going to use this have a scissor close by I have this little um, child scissor that I just keep in my case with my other stuff too because this stuff is really hard to I can't even break it so it's just really hard to break. So if you're gonna have, you gotta have something in order to cut it, okay? Um, so a child scissor, it's not not gonna hurt you because it's not, it's a blunt ended. So that's a good thing to have in here, but this is great for putting on the cork in a pinch when you don't have time to get your cork replaced or you're, it's in the middle of somewhere and something, it just pops off, okay? So it's perfect for that. So you've got all that, okay. And let's see, a couple of the things that I keep uh, in my case all the time is I have a small piece of plexiglass that I keep. And I like to use plexiglass because it's not gonna break, you know, it's not gonna cut me because it's, you know, plexiglass, it's not real glass. So I use this when I'm gonna work on reeds, okay? So it, it has a nice flat surface for the reed. And if I need to just hold it in my hand or if I need to lean it against my leg or something, I don't have a flat surface, this is perfect. So I can just hold it like this. And then I keep um, a small piece of, of um, sandpaper, a little small squares of sandpaper. So in a pinch, when I don't have time to lay out and all my stuff and, and try to work on, you know, putting, making my reeds be perfect, if I have to just quickly take my reed and then just quickly shave on it just a little bit, work on my reed a little bit, get that off. I've got a nice little flat surface. I've got a little piece of sandpaper with me. Um, I've got a couple of different strengths of sandpaper that I can use when I'm working on them so that if I, if I need to do that, I can. Um, I would not recommend leaving it on the mouthpiece and uh, trying to work on it there. 
like that because you could slip, you could scratch your mouthpiece. It's not good to do that. So I would definitely get yourself a little piece of plexiglass like this. I don't know if they would sell that in a store like that, but you can probably go to a framing shop or Michael's um, Hobby Lobby, one of those places that, that can cut things and have them cut you a little piece of plexiglass. But this has been so great and I can keep this in my case and it doesn't get in the way at all. So that's really an awesome thing. Uh, the last thing, well, actually there are two more things, okay? I keep a little um, coffee stirrer straw, okay? It's a real small, small straw. And you might say, well, wh why do you have a straw? Well, because if I want to work on my embouchure, I use this straw to work on getting my muscles feeling like they should be, okay? And it's great for demonstrating how your embouchure should look. So you have that. That's what the straw is for, okay? So that's the last, oh, one more thing. And I always keep several pencils. I always have uh, the pencil in my case with my other items here. I usually keep one in another zipper part. Um, it's good to have several because you just never know when you're gonna need um, another pencil and such too. You always wanna make sure you have plenty of reads too. That's just a given. You always wanna have um, at least at least four in your case, um, if not more. I like to carry a larger reed case that usually has 10 in it, and then maybe another box of reeds, uh, spare reeds that I haven't opened yet, um, in case in a pinch none of my reeds work, and then I can quickly open another box if I need to do that. Okay, so those are some of the things that I think are necessary to have in your case with you. Um, all of these things, you know, with the exception of the the mouthpiece patches and the cork grease, where are you? With the exception of these two things, you can buy like in the dollar store, or you can buy them in um, Walmart or Target or one of those stores. Everything else that I have, you can buy very, very, very cheaply. Okay, so you don't need to spend a lot of money. You can buy all of those things and save yourself a lot rather than spending $20 on a cleaning kit, okay? So that, that's what I would recommend. And then of course, don't forget, you wanna have a good swab, okay? Make sure you have a good swab. If, you're, if you do buy a cleaning kit and it comes with one of those really small swabs, make sure you get a new swab. Um, I like the hanky style, cloth hanky style, cotton, or the silk hanky style. They're both they're both really good. So you can use one of those. And again, it doesn't have to be those particular brands, um, just something that's more of like the hanky style. So, um, and then make sure you have a bag to put it all in. You don't want all this stuff laying around loose in your case. Good way to lose it, okay? So I have this little, little case here. You can use a plastic bag if you want to. You can use a little makeup bag. Um, you know, anything, anything works. Like here's a little, little tiny zipper pocket. Again, uh, at the Dollar Tree, they have tons of little bags like this. You can buy all sorts of things. Here's this other one here. This is, this is actually a pencil bag that you can put into a notebook, but we're just going to put it in our clarinet case instead, but it's got a lot of room in it. Nice. And it should fit perfectly in a side pocket if you have that. Okay. If you don't have a side pocket, if you just have um, a clarinet, a solid clarinet case, then those things can go into your little bag, into your backpack. Okay. Try not to lay stuff on top of your clarinet. Just a good way to scratch your clarinet. Okay. Well, I hope that helped. And if you have any questions or anything, just leave a comment and I will see you the next time.